What's up, everybody? It's Peichel with League of Items, and it's been a while. Uh, it's been a few weeks since I posted a video. Uh, Evan posted on one of my videos saying, what is happening? Where are you? Are you okay? Uh, so I figured I'd make a video just to give everybody an update on what's going on. Uh, so everything's fine. Uh, I've been working a lot in commercial real estate. Uh, it's been taking a ton of my energy. Um, so I've really just been focused on, on my full-time job recently, but I've still been posting every day in the Discord, uh, giving out my picks. Uh, my picks have been doing really well recently. Um, I think uh, the past like three or four days specifically have been like really, really, everybody's been doing really well. Uh, the Discord's been, been doing really well. Uh, a lot of like multiples of thousands of dollars wins uh, for some players in there. Um, so congrats to everybody who's doing really well right now. Glad that I can help contribute with my picks. Um, basically in this video, I'm just going to go over the patch that we're going to get onto. I'm going to go over the matches for tomorrow and then I'm going to give a... I'm going to like catch everybody up on what I think about the teams because I've still been paying attention to League of Legends. I just haven't been talking about it outside of Discord and the Infinity Edge podcast that I'm doing with the esports department. Um, every Thursday, there's a free episode, but there's two other episodes that are behind a paywall on their website. So if you want to check that out and support the podcast, you can sign up for the esports department dot com with the, uh, the code I edge I E D G E. Uh, but that's enough of that. Let's just talk about what's happening uh, on the next patch. So I'm going to run through this pretty fast. So Amumu doesn't matter. Braum, we will probably end up seeing Braum in some professional matches because of his passive. Uh, it's it's very strong. And when we get into these situ if we get into a meta where there's uh, more like late game carries is going to be significant. Caitlyn is more of a lane bully. Uh, if, if we get into a meta where there's a lot of late game carries, Caitlyn is going to be something that tries to take advantage of the early game and limits how much farm they can get and, and like increases the amount of time it takes them to, to scale into the late game. This shouldn't matter. Uh, Fiora, we might actually see Fiora come back into pro play. Uh, we can see Jinx come back into pro, pro play. Kai'Sa, I think people will still end up playing Kai'Sa, but she's not going to be as good. Katarina, we're not going to see... Urgot, we might see. I, I doubt it. Uh, maybe a little bit. Um, I, I've been playing some jungle Urgot for fun sometimes, but it's really just not as good as it used to be. Lee Sin, we will definitely see Lee Sin come back uh, for a few reasons. I'll get into that later. Renekton, uh, he'll, he'll still be played. People just like playing Renekton. Samira, some people are saying Samira is completely dead. She's probably not completely dead. Uh, if we get into late game, if we get into if we get into a meta where there are late game immobile eighty carries, then Samira could potentially counter that in the early game um, by playing super aggressive. Uh, Skarner, I think Skarner's still fine. This kind of thing does impact people, and like maybe that maybe people do play it less, but it should be fine. Um, Soraka getting buffs is never good because she she can come back into pro play, which is annoying. Talon Trinimir, Varus will come back into pro play. Uh, Ginsu's, Ginsu's getting a buff is never a good sign because it's a very strong item already. Moonstone Renewer, it's a very strong item right now. I think it's still fine. Morella Namicon, all these are getting little buffs, which is fine. Mage items, it's fine. This is really the big, the big difference. I guess there's a, a healing. Uh, okay, yeah, so this is really the big difference in the next patch is the jungle camp changes. And I'm not saying that these changes are huge. I'm saying that players' reactions to this change is going to be huge. So I think that we're going to get into a new meta where the jungle champions are a little bit slower. Maybe we see some more utility junglers, more heavy engaged junglers. Uh, Gragas can go back into the jungle more often, I think. Elise is going to come back. Lee Sin is going to be in play. Um, Rek'Sai is going to be in play. Jarvan's going to be in play. A lot of these earlier game, lower economy junglers. Um, now, it's it's very reasonable to ask, like, are these changes big enough to justify that kind of shift? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But the fact of the matter is that people will overreact to this, and we will see a lot of teams just instantly go to uh, lower econ 
heavy ganking junglers, which is going to help some teams a lot. Now, I guess I guess one thing to to kind of discuss would be like even if it just even if it just takes a little bit of power away from the farming junglers, it'll incentivize other teams to play more aggressive in the early game. Um, so like it could trick people into playing a different play style that does well against the farming play style. So it might just seem like the the new gank heavy uh, style is going to be stronger overall. Um, but I don't think that this kind of change necessitates a shift in the meta that severe, but we will most likely see it. Um, which is good for some teams, and it's bad for other teams. Um, and as I go through my tier lists, it'll probably become a little more clear to me which teams benefit and which teams don't benefit, uh, and I'll get into that later. So yesterday, I picked Rogue Warriors, Top Esports, and RNG to upset FPX. I thought that FPX uh, was going to be in trouble with the jungle changes. Um, so this is, this is the, I'll just read my write-ups from yesterday. <clears throat> Rogue Warriors, I said was better than LGD. Ziv, Haro, Forge, Betty, and Kai Schwan are all just as good, if not better than LGD counterparts. I think the reason the line is posted this way is because people remember LGD were okay last split. Uh, LGD was listed as the favorites and have a slightly better record with the same number of wins and less losses. Uh, LGD ended up winning that match. Top Esports better than E-Star, obviously. Um, I'm like 99% sure that is what happened. RNG over uh, over FPX. Nagari is better than Xiaohu in terms of what we have seen thus far, but if Xiaohu was a top laner his entire career, I think his talent level is right in line with Nagari. I think we have to give away the benefit of the doubt over Beishuan, who is the new rookie jungler that they had to play since Bo was match-fixing an amateur. Um, I think Doon B is better than Kryon, and bot lane has been pretty close in terms of performance this split. Obviously, LWX and Crisp have better history because they've won a championship. Uh, FPX is definitely capable of keeping the series close and potentially winning, but there's no way they should be the favorites. FPX was listed as a minus 156 favorite, um, which I think ultimately comes down to their popularity. Beishuan and Wei do appear to have big champion pool overlay, which slightly benefits RNG in the draft since they will have side select twice. I assume they take blue side and take priority junglers. Um, the other thing about this meta is going to be players like Doonby, um, picking like wild champs. Like I was talking about Rumble. Uh, he played Scion today, which is always interesting. Hanma Life against DRX. I know DRX has a better record, but if you used a look ahead line from before the season started, this line would have moved an insane amount. Since this match starts at three and the contest lock at two, you will not feel good playing Morgan or Dudu, which is fine. I think they're equal with Kingen at worst, but Morgan is the better of, is the best of the three. I, I do believe that. Uh, I prefer Piosik over Arthur, but not by much. Chovy is better than Salka. Deft and Vista are better than Bao and Becca. I think this is a good spot to just play the better team. In their first match, Homolife won 2-1, which was thought of as a good result for DRX because they were able to pick up a game in the match. But now I think they're overvalued, especially when going up against a top team, which I still think Homolife is a top team. Damwon against T1. I want T1 to win, but I have no idea who they're going to start. They ended up going with Zeus... Uh, Warner, uh, Closer, Teddy, and Keria. Um I want T1 to win, but I have no idea who they're going to start. T1 should use the same lineup from their last match, which I think they did. This is the kind of match where if T1 plays their young lineup and is competitive with Dom1 Gaming, they will most likely use this configuration going forward um, through Worlds. I'm very interested to watch this match, and the reason I'll stick with Dom1 Gaming and feed T1 is fade T1 is because there are a lot of scenarios where a close loss is viewed as a win for T1. Um, that mentality, I think, isn't really going to show itself in that match, but um, I think that I think that it was just ob it was a pretty obvious spot, I think, to, to play Dom1 Gaming. Um, tomorrow we have V5 against LNG. V5 is a minus 132 favorite. Rare Adam against OMG. Rare Adam's minus 770. That's insane. Uh, Sunning against Invictus Gaming. Uh, Invictus is minus 190. Um, so just initial reaction. I think that... Let's see. V5 and LNG... All right, Longshi against Mukuya or Ale, pretty close. 
probably lean uh, Longshi. Weiwei against Tarzan, I think Tarzan's a better player. Mole against Icon, I think Icon's a better player, but they're a, they're like a little different. Mole Mole seems like someone who will be Icon in a few years. Like Icon just been around longer. Um, Light and Elwandi against Y4 or Trigger God and PP God. Y4 and Trigger and PP God. Um, I think I prefer LNG here. Uh, I haven't done any research into it, but I'm going to go with LNG for now. Uh, Rare Atom against OMG. This is a pretty huge line. Uh, what did OMG do in their last match? They lost to V5. They beat BLG. Lost to Invictus Gaming. I would play... If I was betting on this... I would say OMG plus one and a half maps. I think they can take a game off of Rare Atom. No problem. I'm not a big fan of Rare Atom. I just don't believe in their talent. Who have they played recently? They beat Thunder Talk. They beat LNG. They beat World Elite. Beat Rogue Warriors. I don't know. I don't believe in, in Rare Atom. I would say OMG plus one and a half play rare atom for draft kings just assuming they get a two to one uh yeah it sounds fine sooning against ig uh so invictus gaming has been playing well recently they beat edg the other day which i i picked that uh they lost to rng they beat omg beat rogue warriors lost to fpx when fpx had bow it's it's tough, but I think right now Invictus Gaming is probably a little overvalued and Sunning is a little undervalued. So like Invictus Gaming coming off the best win of their season against Sunning, who has looked not that great so far. I think that the jungle changes would actually be more beneficial for Sunning uh, and for S of M, but we haven't gotten into that into that yet. Uh, they're not playing on that patch yet. So, Bin against the Shy. Bin can definitely beat the Shy in lane, which not a lot of top laners can do. Uh, Shun against S of M. On this pa on 11.3, I probably still I probably prefer Shun. Um, on the next patch, I think I'd probably prefer S of M, assuming that like people start adapting to this new play style. Rookie is better than Angel, um, and I think Quan Fung and An are the better combination than Lucas and Puff. Um, Puff did have a good match. Uh, in their previous game, but I just don't believe in that. Uh, I don't believe in um, their bot lane, really. I think it's definitely just a, a top lane dominant team, and he gets to pick up some kills. Uh, this is another spot where I would say play Sunning plus one and a half, and then you can play whoever you want for DraftKings. It's really, you know, whatever team you like better, uh, or what narrative you want to play. Genji against the Freak of Freaks. I think Genji definitely wins that match, and then... Live Sandbox against Nongshim. Summit and Rich, that's a good matchup. Peanut is better than Kroko or Onfleek. Uh, it's probably going to be Kroko. Bay and Fate are about even. Diokdom and Kellen against... I think they're playing Prince now. Prince and Effort. Um, I prefer Nongshim. They are the minus 175 favorite. Live Sandbox is definitely a live dog. You probably you I I don't think you're crazy if you want to get exposure to sandbox because Nongshim does die a decent amount in their losses. Um, but that's enough of those games. Let's get into the tier lists and I'll I'll talk about the different teams and where I think they kind of stand at this point. So we're gonna start from the bottom. So let's talk about Rogue Warriors real quick. Um, Rogue Warriors in the next patch when Haro is able to play like Rek'Sai, Elise, and these other types of champions, I think that'll be a benefit for Rogue Warriors. Rogue Warriors is moving in the right direction. I think the fact that they have Betty now is an upgrade. Um, I, I don't hate Forge, but he's not that good. I don't hate Ziv, but he's not that good. Like com Compared to the players in other regions, they're, they would be league average in those other regions, but in the LPL, it's such a strong league that um, they're just below average. Uh, I have DMO's logo, but it's Thunder Talk now. I just I haven't changed it. Uh, Chalizzi, Xiaopeng, 
Captain or Twyla, Sam Dantine. I really wish that Thunder Talk just played Captain and let him get some experience um, in pro play because I, I'm pretty. It's pretty clear that Twyla is not going to be a good mid laner in the LPL. I think. Um, so that's a little surprising for me that they're still playing some of these matches. Uh, I don't have a good feel for this team, but luckily they're at the bottom of the table and almost every match you can just pick against them and you're going to be right. Uh, next up is E-Star. E-Star. ZS is someone I'm still excited about. Hacker's a relatively good player. Irma, Rat, and Xiaosi. I think E-Star is not really as bad as their record. I think that they can definitely take some games off of good teams and be competitive with the middle tier. Um... It's just going to come down to like matchup dependent stuff. I think Hacker would also benefit from the new meta. It's um, it's more in line with what they were playing when they were thought of as a, a relatively good jungler. Um, next up, OMG. OMG, we have a million top laners. I think New has been playing mostly. So New, Aki, Wooming, Eric, and Cold. Uh, not a fan of OMG overall. Just leave him down here. I think that's fine. LGD. Uh, I think that LGD is still kind of thought of as what they were last year, but they're much different than last year, and I think they're a lot worse than last year. Uh, Kramer is just not good anymore, in my opinion. Uh, I, I think that I'll be actively playing against LGD, especially when they're favorites against um, other bottom-tier teams. Vici Gaming is now Rare Atom Gaming, uh, Cube, Aix, Fofo, iBoy, and Hong. I think that this is a team that, this is another team that I just don't have a good feel for, and I don't like them, so I generally pick against them. So that's something to watch out for when you're uh, listening to my breakdowns of stuff. I just don't, I just don't think that they're a good DraftKings team most of the time, and they don't, they don't have convincing they don't, they don't seem to have very convincing wins over the bad teams, and they're not competitive with the better teams. So whenever like their record looks just as good or better than another team that's right around them, I'll probably pick the other team because I just don't like them. Uh, I just don't think they're a very good team. The upcoming meta... I don't know about Leon. It's it's interesting. Like, Le so it could be a really... It could be a good meta for Leon because when Leon was being brought into the Invictus Gaming roster, it was because of the previous types of metas that we played. Leon was really powerful in the preseason meta going into the 2020 season, but it like fundamentally changed on 10-7, and you know, it was more farm heavy. Leon's more of a ganking type player, so this could be a good meta for, for Leon, so I would watch out for that. Maybe that maybe maybe they start playing more aggressive in the early game and that could be pretty interesting because if it's an early if it's an aggressive early jungle meta with scaling eighty carries, that would actually kind of fit into the playstyle that Rare Adam wants. Um Suning is another team I think that will benefit from the meta shift. I think that S of M was already uh like pretty good on the previous meta in the previous meta, but S of M S of M is even better when they can pick like a variety of champions, be aggressive in the early game, and be the the bridge into the middle and late game for Huan Feng and Bin. So the more early game champions that S of M has access to and pick band phase is going to be uh, better for Suning. I, I do think that they're a middle of the pack team, even though their record isn't that great. Uh, they're three and five right now. I expect them to do better in the second half of the season. BLG BLG is a team that I've been high on all season. Uh, BLG their coaching is horrible. Their drafts are horrible, and it's really sad because I think you have a very good mid laner in Zika. You have a very good AD carry in aiming. Um, you should be able to do better. But everybody in Discord is basically like, yeah, they're a stay away until they get this drafting stuff figured out because they're just so bad um, in their drafts. I'll give you an example. Let's just do that real quick. Um I remember I turned on the I turned on the, on their match the other day and I was just like what is happening why would how did you how did you get counterpicked in three lanes so they were playing against EDG it was Nar against Gangplank Gangplank wins that match because uh, he's gonna outscale you and he's a little bit stronger than you in the early game he'll just shoot you in the face the entire time Graves against Udir is not a, a huge favorite 
Udyr is not a huge favorite in that matchup, but Udyr can run down Graves if they're even, which is a problem. Uh, Oriana and Azir are even, and then Zaya into Kaisa, so Zaya's side is better. Um, it's thought of as a soft counter. Um, so I just don't understand how that how stuff like that happens in in pick ban phases for professional teams. Um, just weird. It's just weird. Like that should not be happening. So BLG, I think most people are gonna stay away from BLG until they figure everything out but if it's blg against any of these teams down here i'm picking blg if it's blg against v5 and vici or um uh rare adam i'm probably picking billy billy gaming if it's billy billy gaming against lng i'm probably picking billy billy gaming maybe even fpx because fpx i think they're gonna have some issues now that bo is not their jungler bo bo did a lot to help that team uh the upcoming meta should be good for fpx if they had a a good jungler because it's more similar to the one that they world they won worlds on, um, and do and B is going to have a champion ocean, so it, he'll be able to play a ton of different um, champions, which is always good for do and B. Uh, LNG, Makuya or Ale, uh, I'm not sure who's really playing more often right now off the top of my head. Tarzan, Icon, Light, and Elwandi. I I like LNG. They're, I think they have a pretty good roster. I think that, they, again, they're better than all these teams down here, and I would have them probably beating V5 and Rare Adam. Uh, the problem is that Rare Adam, I think... Maybe I'm just overly negative. Um, FPX. Uh, so, Nogri. Nogri is a good player, but... Uh, it's... Not the best they, they they haven't really leveled up away from like the con situation like gimgoon con nagari like have you really seen a gigantic difference between those three top laners when they're playing on an fpx team that either has a very aggressive jungler when bow was playing or a like a a mid laner like doing b who is going to take most of the focus from the enemy team it just it doesn't seem like a great fit right now in this meta, but maybe on the next meta it it makes more sense. So Nagri, Beishuan, doing BLWX and Crisp. I don't know what's going on with Tian. I don't know if he's coming back. I don't know what his his issues are right now. And then with um with Bo, I don't know how long he was suspended, but he was accused of match fixing, and I think he admitted uh, admitted to it. Um, so I'm I'm pretty comfortable with these teams down here. And then the six. These these six teams are like legitimate teams that I think will be competing um, for the championship this year. Like in playoffs, unless these teams are playing against one another, I'll be picking them to advance in their matchups. Uh, so we have Invictus Gaming. I don't know if you can see the in. Oh, mm. don't save. Yeah, I don't know if you can really see the Invictus Gaming. I think it's just the way that my screen is positioned. Um, but Invictus Gaming right now is 5-4. and four. Invictus Gaming is a team that I always want to play because a lot of people are skittish about them. Uh, they they lose some ugly games. But the Shy is one of the better top laners in the league. Shun has had a really good rookie split so far. Rookie is one of the best mid laners in the league. Um, Wink and Puff are about the same. In my opinion, I, I don't think there's a gigantic difference. Baolan and Lucas. Baolan is obviously the more uh, proven player, but they've been playing with Lucas recently. Uh, I don't have enough information on Lucas yet. Um, just a good team overall. I think that if it's IG against any of these teams below them, I'm definitely picking IG. And then there are a lot of spots where I will pick IG against these other teams, depending on the meta. Uh, JDG... JDG is probably the team that's going to benefit the most from the upcoming changes, I think. Um, this is a perfect situation for Kanavi. So we have Zoom, Kanavi, Yagao, and Shie, Loken, Lumao. I think that JDG is going to be much better in the next part of the split. Uh, the early aggression is going to be very good for them. Um, next up, World Elite. Breathe, Beishang, uh, Shanks, and Yimang, Zhao Meng, and Missing. World Elite has been very good so far this year. Um, like they, They've definitely played better than they did last year, but I don't think that their ceiling is much higher than it was last year. I think the results are just better. 
Uh, I, I think Team World Elite was always capable of playing this well, um, and I'm not sure how much better they could get. So it might be a spot where they kind of like stall out in terms of like how good they can get. Um, a really good DraftKings team. Everybody likes playing them, uh, but I'm I'm a little skeptical in how much better they can be in in real life in these like longer series, in these longer matches. Uh, top esports: three six nine, Carsa, Knight, Jackie Love, and Zhuo. Uh I think that Top Esports is another team that will benefit a lot from this upcoming meta. When you think back to patch ten point seven, which is about a year ago at this point, um, or a little a little less than a year ago at this point, uh, Carsa, if Lee Sin comes back into the meta, Karsa is going to probably be the best jungler in in China just because of being able to play Lee Sin into every single matchup and always having playmaking ability and it's just it's just a fact of life. Kars is gonna play Lee Sin if it's possible. Um, so that's a very good thing for Top Esports if that comes back into the meta. Top Esports has not been that great so far this year. Uh, a lot of their results have been like a little surprising. Uh, they're five and three. Let's take a look at who they lost to. Top Esports lost to FPX, which was a little surprising when that happened. They lost to Rogue Warriors, which was really surprising when that happened. And they lost to Sunning. I think that was the first match of the year. So Top Esports is fine at this point. Uh, nothing to worry about, really. Uh, next are the two teams that I think a lot of people were a little bit more surprised by. Like, going into the year, Top Esports, JDG, Invictus Gaming were already thought of as top teams. Um, World Elite was in that, in that next pack. FPX was thought of as an, an as an elite team. Sunning was thought of as an elite team because of their success at Worlds. But both of these two teams have kind of taken a step back, in my opinion, right now. FPX is 7-3, and three, but FPX, with their roster changes, I think are going to struggle a little bit. Um, but RNG and EDG are two teams that I'm very happy with in terms of how they've been approaching the game. So first, let's do RNG. Xiaohu, Wei, Cryan, Gala, and Ming. Gala has been a, sh has been a shock for me. I think that... Like, their job is to clean up in team fights, and they can do their job. I don't think that Gala is the best AD carry in China. I don't even know if Gala is necessarily, like, a, a good AD carry in China. But I do know that the other players are good enough to put Gala in positions to succeed. Um, so that this is a spot where I think of Gala as a running back with a good offensive line that makes holes for them. Gala can run through the holes and break long touchdowns. Xiaohu has been very good in the top lane. I know a lot of people were skeptical about the transition from mid to top, but it's really not that difficult. You just have to pick up some champions. Xiaohu has played this game for forever. Um, their champion pool is undoubtedly gigantic. Uh, can play. All, we already knew that he could play things like Jason, Lucian, um, but you know it's it's branched out even further than that at this point. And they just beat Nogri. Um, not not like one on one, but the fact that you can go into that kind of matchup and the other team can't just like try to outscale you in the top lane because Xiaohu uh, is just a good League of Legends player. First of all, he's a good League of Legends player. Second of all, he's good enough at top lane to uh, to go even against other good top laners. So it's a it's a really huge success for R RNG that they were able to pull this off. Uh, very impressive. Um, and then lastly, EDG, Flandre, Jai Jai, Scout, Viper, and Mako. Um, they're 8-1. RNG's also 8-1. I don't think that they're like much better than Top Esports, World Elite, JDG, and Invictus Gaming. And it sucks for me because I feel like I'm going to be in a position where during the playoffs I have to pick against them. When in reality, I was hopeful that they could have good seasons. And I don't want to root against them. Hmm. But I feel like I'm going to be like required to do that um, because of uh, because of how I expect other people to talk about them. I just do think it's a little. Um, okay, let's go. So, so basically what I think, of, what I think with this list right now is like these teams aren't ranked in order. I think the top six teams are clearly the top six teams. I think FPX can definitely get into that top pack, but because of the jungle changes, 
like we need to see what's going to happen to Beishwan before we can feel comfortable um, with FPX in the playoffs. Um, and I think at least at least one of these teams will like have a good playoff performance. Um, but we'll have to wait and see for that. Let's go to the LCK. Um, so the LCK, it's really four good teams and everybody else. Um, Dom Juan just beat T1 last night. That was a good win for them. Uh, they're 11 and one. Gen G is in second place, eight and three. I think Gen G is about even with Hanwha Life and T1. Like I don't have big differentiators between these teams. Um, Hanwha Life, I'm surprised they go between Morgan and Dudu as much as they do. Arthur has been pretty good this season. Chovy, Deft, and Vista. Uh, Chovy and Deft are very good players, obviously. T1's season has been like outrageous. They just continuously change their roster. Um, the fact that they played their young lineup against Don Juan and played pretty well, I think that's going to have a, a big impact on how they approach the rest of the season because if they can get more games on these younger players, they'll probably just ride with them for the rest of the year, which is crazy because they have Kana, who other teams would love to have, uh, Elim and Cuz, who some other teams would probably want, Faker, who's not going anywhere, but you know maybe a team would want him, but Faker's not going to leave T1. Uh, he's a partial owner. Uh, and then Guma, Yusi, and Teddy, both very good. Whichever one of these players is not the, the starter for the summer is probably going to get sold off. And then Keria is the best support in the world, uh, in my opinion. So um, it's it's a weird situation, and T1 is willing to lose matches to kind of figure this whole thing out. Um, they're probably putting too much weight on the stage games. Like, I'm sure they have a lot of uh, intra-squad scrimmages, scrimmages and stuff like that. So they feel comfortable switching up their lineup a lot, which is kind of scary for us on DraftKings, especially... Uh, in in slates where we don't have T1's roster before lock. Um, but the rest of the teams, uh, like, I I think it's really cool that DRX has managed to pull off reloading their roster with some decent players, um, but their results have been way too good so far this season. I, did, I just don't think that's sustainable. They went 2-0 and against the Freak of Freaks, which probably should have been 1-1. to They lost to um, Damwon Gaming. They'll probably lose to Damwon again. Uh, Fredit Breon, maybe they can 2-0 Fredit Breon again against Gen G. I expect them to lose to Gen G next time. Hanwha Life, they've lost to twice. KT Rolster, they lost to. Live Sandbox, they could theoretically beat again. Nongshim, I would expect Nongshim to beat DRX because I think that Peanut is still a little bit better than Piosik, but Piosik has had a good season. And then DRX beat T1, and that was just outrageous. That was that was one of the matches where everybody was upset that T1's changing rosters and losing matches. Um. Yeah, I, I still like PO6. Sulka's had a good season. Bows had a, a, a good season. Um, they're doing enough to win matches, and you know it's it's tough to discredit them. Um, I just don't believe in them uh, in the playoffs. Like, there's no there's no way that I'm picking them to beat T1, Genji, Hamo Life, or Dom One Gaming in the playoffs. Um, there's no way I'm picking any of these teams down here to beat one of those teams in the playoffs. That'd be an incredible upset. Um, which doesn't typically happen. Like upset, upsets of that size don't really happen in Korea very often in the playoffs. Um, Nongshim. So with Peanut, I think the, the the next patch is going to be very good for Peanut. It's going to be a different type of carry. Like Peanut was good at the carry meta when it was first starting, but everybody else kind of caught up to Peanut. And then when we go back the other direction, I think Peanut will be one of the first adopters of the new champions, which is going to benefit uh, Nongshim a decent amount in my opinion, uh, a freak of freaks. I'm a little surprised that they haven't been able to really like do better, but they're about where you'd expect them to be. I think that they could definitely sneak into playoffs. They could get past KT Rolster for playoffs. Um, KT Rolster is a team that I just don't have a good feel for. I don't like any of their, well, D Doran's a good player. Um, I do like Blank, but, you know, Blank isn't even playing anymore. It's Gideon. Then we have Ucal and Dove, Hybrid and Zeus. Just not a team that I have a good feel for. Um, I, I generally pick against them for that reason. Uh, Fred at Breon and Live Sandbox. Uh, well, Sandbox was stupid enough to have Yamato Cannon, so we have to have them at the bottom. 
and then Fred Brian had some good performances in the early season, but just not a not a very good team. That's really it for the LCK. It's really these four teams that are very good, and then everyone else. DRX, maybe they deserve to be by themselves in a separate tier, but I'm fine either way. Uh, I think that the fact that they cannot get into this tier of teams, just leave them down there. Um, let's go to the LEC. So for these next two, for the L LEC and the LCS, I haven't done the tier the tiers yet, so let's just see what I had previously. All right. Okay, so let's go from 10th place and up. Vitality. Uh, Vitality had has been very, uh, like, under... They've underperformed extremely uh, during this split. Their roster is not bad. Uh, Shigenda's a decent player. Skeens, um, I think, has been the big question mark for their team. Milica, Crown Shot, and Lebrov. I'm surprised they went from comp to crown shot. Uh, I think I would have just left uh, comp in the lineup. Maybe there were some other issues that that like we didn't we couldn't learn about. Um, but they have a really boring play style. Uh, when when crown shot came in, I was hopeful that they would kind of try to change everything. Vitality is also a team that I think will benefit from the shift in metas because Skeens is more of an old school traditional jungler than he is a farming jungler. So. I think that we'll still see things like Lilia, Talia, um, champions like Elise. Um, I think also Lee Sin is good for Skeens. Um, I would expect them to get a slight bump from the upcoming meta shift, and I'll be picking them as underdogs in some spots moving forward. Astralis, uh, they finally got rid of Nuke Duck. I don't know if I've made a video since then, but good for you. Uh, get rid of Nuke Duck. That guy is not good. White Knight has had a pretty good year so far. Zanzara, uh, this is going to be a good thing for Zanzara moving forward in the new meta. Magifelix, Jeskala, Promise Q, they're okay. Um, it's it, This is another team that I will want to play a lot moving forward um, because people have a very negative opinion of them, but I think they've done a lot to improve that image in my mind, so I'm, I'm fine playing them. Misfits, I'm a Misfits degenerate. Everybody knows it. Uh, I think talent wise, they're a very good team. Uh, they just have some bad, really bad losses. So Misfits lost to Schalke. I think they should have been able to beat Schalke. They've lost to Rogue twice. They lost to SK twice and they lost to Vitality. Uh, they should have been able to go one and one with SK. I think that they have the potential to go one and one against a team like Rogue, but they didn't. Um, it's just sad. Just not a very good season from them. Uh, yeah, I, I can't quit them. I don't know what it is. Uh, they won the other day and they didn't score enough to, to kind of win, but I'm playing them again today. So watch out. Uh, they'll probably, uh, lose again. Uh, Schalke. Schalke is an interesting team. I don't, I'm not really sure what's going to happen on the next patch, but I would assume that it helps Gilius. The, the more early game ganking junglers that Gilius has access to is going to, help Broken Blade and Abadage win their lanes harder. Uh, and it's not going to do much for bot lane. So I think that it'll be a benefit for Schalke overall. But Schalke has been playing a really slow play style. They have... They have a few good wins. They beat G2. They beat Rogue. They went 1-1 one one against SK. Um... They could make playoffs, but they're not doing anything in playoffs. Uh, then we have XL. I still think XL is one of the bottom five teams. Like, for, for the entire year, I was basically saying it's five good teams, five bad teams. I think I might have to switch this up a little bit. Um, XL, XL lost yesterday, right? XL lost to Misfits. Um, XL is another slow scaling team. Dan's a bad jungler. I don't I don't know why he's on their team. And I don't think that actually it'll probably be a benefit for them to to get into a new meta because Dan will be asked to do less. The the less significant jungle experience and jungle economy is for um the meta, I think it'll be better for Dan cuz then Dan can just play like supportive utility style junglers and 
and just gank lanes. So maybe that is actually a benefit for them. I, I didn't think about it like that before. Um, cause I just don't, I don't feel like he's maybe aggressive enough to take advantage of those opportunities, but we'll have to wait and see. That's like the best case scenario for them is that the meta shift helps them. Um, I think that XL is going to continue to move in the wrong direction though. I'll probably be picking up, picking against XL frequently moving forward. SK gaming, um, interesting team. I think Gen X has had a good season. Tanks is already one of the best junglers in the LEC, in my opinion. Um, he is not a... He he did well in the farming meta because he could like just continuously get Hecarim and teams were just willing to give him Hecarim all the time. That's going to be very good in the, next, in the next meta because... Well, maybe not. That the the meta shift could actually be a bad a big problem for SK. I don't think I remember ever seeing tanks before uh, he started playing a lot of Hecarim. So we'll have to see what other kinds of picks he has, or if Hecarim is still a good option in the in the future meta. Um, SK is another team that you probably want to pick against somewhat often because now teams are having now teams players will have an overly high opinion of them, and like they have had good results, but it's a it's just a good spot where like when the public sentiment is getting too high, you just start playing against them. Mad Lions, uh, Mad Lions has been disappointing so far this year, but disappointing for them is seven and five. Uh, if Mad Lions played against SK Gaming tomorrow, I would pick Mad Lions. If Mad Lions played against Fnatic tomorrow, I'd probably pick Mad Lions. If Mad Lions played Rogue, I'd probably pick Rogue. But I would want Mad Lions to win. If Mad Lions play G2, they would lose because the play styles are too similar and G2 is just better. Um, next up, Fnatic. Uh, I think Fnatic is another team that's going in the wrong direction. I expect them to lose today. Uh, I expect them to lose today against um, G2. That would be a very good win for them if they could pick up a win over G2. I just I doubt it. I just don't see it happening. Um, it's a best of one, so anything can happen, but for the DraftKings slate, I'm like, I think I have some G2 lineups and I just completely faded Fnatic. Uh, Rogue, Rogue is clearly the second best team in Europe. Some people will want to say that they're the best team in Europe, but they're not. Uh, G2 is the best team in Europe uh, and it's not close in my opinion. I think G2 is much better than Rogue. And if G2 plays against Rogue in the finals, I will, I will be all over G2. I just don't see Rogue beating them. Rogue needs to make some more changes to their play style in order to be competitive against a team like G2. Uh, Otto Omne against Wonder. I think Wonder's champion pool is just much better. Like his, he had he play he can play like any champion, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, Yonkos against Inspired. On this meta, it is a little bit Inspired favored. In the future meta, I think it's a little bit Yonkos favored, um, but it it's less significant in the future. But that's where Yonkos will shine because of his aggress aggression in the early game the first blood king uh caps is better than larson reckless is better than han sama mickey is better than trimby so i think i think it's either three or four lanes is g2 favored in all metas and then in the upcoming meta i think that four out of five four or five out of five um favor g2 so that's just you know how i see it so this is pretty close to the order that i see these teams um sk XL against Schalke. Probably Schalke. I could see Vitality moving. Like, if it was just based off of talent, I think that I would rather have Vitality than SK, Schalke, XL, or Astralis. Um, but that's that's just the way that it is nowadays. So I think these four teams up here are very good. These teams down here, uh, not so good. Four good teams, six questionably good teams. Um... I just hope Misfits sneaks into the playoffs and pulls off an upset. That's really what I'm hoping for at this point. Uh, let's see. Last up, we have the LCS. All right. So in 10th place, we have Counter Logic Gaming. Counter Logic Gaming is in a good spot moving forward. I think that their their roster is finally going to get figured out. Um, they are going to benefit from the new meta. This is going to be a perfect Broxa meta. Um, and I think that I think that they'll be competitive uh, moving forward. They had a good match against 100 Thieves last night, but didn't win. 
today they're playing against TSM. I think they could beat TSM uh, because of playstyle reasons. They have some tough matches today and tomorrow against TSM and Dignitas, but next week I think we start firing at CLG against Immortals, pick CLG over FlyQuest. Um, I, I could definitely see that happening. Uh, Golden Guardians, I think, is the worst team in the league. Uh, they are, I think CLG is definitely better than, than Golden Guardians. Um, so I'll move that down. I'll move that there. Uh, it's really sad what's happened with Golden Guardians. Um, Niles has just been getting destroyed. And at this point, I think it's the coach's fault because they haven't been able to, to teach Niles how to deal with this early game pressure and like just teams diving him all the time. So they either need to put him on different types of champions or they need to give him more support in the game. Uh, next up, Immortals. Uh, Immortals, I think that Xerxes will be good in the, in the future meta. <clears throat> Insanity is an okay player. Revenge, I don't like re Revenge. Uh, Ray is in Destiny. I hate Australia. I hate the OPL. I hate uh, Kangaroos. So, you know, I just hate Immortals in general. Um, kind of joking, but but not really. Um, it's just a big lump of teams down here. Uh, they can all compete pretty well with one another. Dignitas has to go higher, though. Uh, next up, we'll do FlyQuest. FlyQuest 3 and 7. FlyQuest has a really good playstyle for DraftKings, and that always makes me want to roster them and roster teams against them. So Licorice, uh, still a very good player. Jose Deodo, probably the most overrated player in the LCS right now. Palafox, Johnson, and Diamond, um, they're all decent players, but the future success of FlyQuest is going to come down to Licorice and Jose Deodo. And the meta shift that we're going into is the main reason why I was skeptical of why they picked up Jose Deodo, because we've only seen him in a like a jungle carry meta where they get a ridiculous amount of farm and can carry because of it. It'll be interesting to see how they do when it's more of a gank heavy meta. I don't know if that's going to benefit them or not. Um, I could see them just playing through top lane a ton, and that would benefit both Licorice and Jose Diodo. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of their future prospects right now. I think that, like, for example, if Immortals or CLG were playing up against FlyQuest, I would pick Immortals and CLG. Uh, Dignitas, Dignitas has been great so far this year, and it's really cool to watch. I like Dardoch. I love Dardoch. Dardoch is one of my favorite players. Um, and he's been one of my favorite players for a long time. Um, his diverse champion pool is a huge benefit for his team. And we're going to see Dardoch at his best in the next meta. The next meta is perfect for Dardoch. He's a very good Lee Sin player. Uh, he's pretty good at Rek'Sai, I think. He's a good Elise. He is just good at everything. Like, he's just a very good player. And... He's, he, he hasn't had a lot of the issues with, like, being overly, um, he's not, like, too much in the public eye right now, which is a benefit for him, I think. He was always, like, the heel of the LCS, and now he's kind of just, like, in behind the scenes and doing his thing. Uh, Fake God has had a good year so far. Soligo and Neo have been the beneficiaries of Dardox play. Uh, top, the, the reason I say that is because top lane is a little, a little bit more separate from the jungler. Like most of the time you have to just deal with the other top laner on your own. Uh, and then Aphromoo is the, just like a, a consistent, steady veteran presence, uh, and has been playing very well. Uh, when Alistair is in the meta, Aphromoo is in the meta. Um, next up, 100, th uh, let's just do Team Liquid. So Team Liquid, I still think that Team Liquid is is talent-wise one of the better rosters. They haven't had a lot of good performances. They have some questionable losses. They lost a 100 Thieves, which I think is a bad loss considering my opinion of Team Liquid and 100 Thieves. They beat C9, which is great. They beat CLG, which they're supposed to. They beat Dignitas, which they're supposed to, but Dignitas is better than I think everyone thought they would they could be. W before the season started, my, my thing was like, if Fake God is an okay top laner. They can be competitive. I didn't expect them to be this competitive, though. Uh, they lost to Evil Geniuses, which was a good spot for Evil Geniuses. I was fine with that. They've lost to TSM twice, which wasn't really surprising to me. I think TSM is just as good as them talent-wise. Um, but once we get into uh, the Best Of series, I think Alfari, Santorin, Jensen, Tactical, and Core JJ, it's just tough to beat them consistently um, in a Best Of Five. Uh, so I still have them 
I still have them up here. Uh, next up, Evil Geniuses. Evil Geniuses. Impact, Sven Skaren, Jizuke, Deftly, and Ignar. I like Evil Geniuses a lot. I like their play style. Evil Geniuses is the, is the type of team where I'm, I'm okay playing them and I'm okay playing against them depending on what everyone else thinks of them. If Evil Geniuses is coming off of a good win, they're going to lose. If they're coming off of a bad loss, they're going to win. That's just the kind of team that Evil Geniuses is. They can beat anyone and they can lose to anyone. Uh, so it's really tough to trust them and get like gigantic exposures of them on DraftKings. Uh, 100 Thieves, I'm very anti-100 Thieves, and it's because I just don't believe in DeMonte long-term. So, Someday, still a very good top laner. Closer, I think, is going to be negatively impacted by the meta shift, but it's it's possible that, that Closer is just as good on the new meta because he was already thought of as an aggressive early game jungler before the uh, before the farm meta came. So, it... Closer is is probably going to be okay, but it's a question mark for me. Uh, Demonte still has a very limited champion pool. When you get into a carry versus carry spot, you just can't really feel good about the matchup uh, for Demonte. And then FBI and who he have have still been pretty good uh, this split. They're seven and three. Um, I will gladly pick against them for like the rest of the year, especially in playoffs. Uh, next up, TSM. Uh, TSM started off really poorly. Uh, and still has some questionable drafts, but I think that this is kind of what we expected going into the year. Um, the public sentiment on TSM is shockingly low for a 7-3 and three team. Um, I think that we haven't seen the best of Lost, we haven't seen the best of Sword Art, and that's a good sign if you're a TSM fan. Um, I still haven't watched that Hooney interview from yesterday, I, st I have to do that uh, sometime today. And then, last but not least, the best team in the LCS is definitely Cloud9. This is a spot where we haven't seen the best of Fudge. Uh, Blabber's still very good and will be even better in the next the next meta. Blabber was bad on this meta, in my opinion. The uh, the Graves the Graves heavy meta. I just it doesn't fit Blabber's uh, preferred play style. Um, I think that in the future we're going to see even a, an, an even more powerful Blabber and a blabber who's able to create larger advantages against the enemy jungler perks uh, is finally rounding into form Zven and Vulcan one of the best bot lanes in in the LCS um it's pretty it's pretty clear like the LCS is another region where you have a handful of good teams and then some very bad teams one two three four five six seven eight nine ten um I think these th these three teams are the only ones I really expect to have a chance to win the championship. These are the other three teams I expect to make the playoffs. Um, that's that's about it. So I think that was about an hour. Yeah, 53 minutes. So hopefully that gives you like uh, my perspective on what's going on and kind of catches, up, catches you up over the, the last couple of weeks. Now that we have all of the regions back in play, uh, hopefully I can start making videos more often. But like I've said, I've been swamped with work. And unless I can start making videos at my office... It's like, like I just can't make videos that often. Like one or two videos a weekend outside of the Infinity Edge podcast is really the best I can do right now. Um, but who knows? Maybe I'll maybe I'll start making more videos again. Uh, they'll probably be shorter videos though. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.